What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Simply Walk the Talk. I am your host, Joshua J. Holland, and today we have a very special show. The guest and I have been planning a retreat. And so if you've been following my social media, you may have noticed that I've posted some content, sort of the first bit of content that's coming out. We decided to hop on today's show to talk you all through that. Today's guest is a former client of mine. Her name is Marie Gevers. She has been passionate about health and wellness, mental health, physical well-being as for as long as I've known her, for sure. She studied psychology and nutrition during her time in New York at NYU, which is where her and I first met. And while she was at school learning about the human mind and body, she found it quite hard to manage the many stresses that came with living in a big city. This led her to begin her own wellness journey by working with many renowned nutritionists, coaches, and spiritual leaders. Marie first arrived to Turks and Caicos by sailboat with her family 16 years ago. Since then, she has been going back every year and has been living there permanently for over three years. Due to her intimate knowledge of the island, Marie is in a great position to show you all of the magic the islands have to offer. Welcome to Simply Walk the Talk. Our bodies and minds adapt to what we do most of the time. If you want to change your body and mind, you must change what it is you do most of the time. This podcast explores all things health, wellness, fitness, lifestyle, and biohacking. Stay tuned as we explore various thoughts, methods, and experiences from a multitude of conversations between our interesting guests and experts through many fields of work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simply walk the top. Simply walk the top. Marie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Josh. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you here. And here for you is in Turks and Caicos, right? That's right. That's where I am. That's why I'm in my bathing suit right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you definitely have that that island vibe that I'm craving right now because um, I did actually have a chance to go and visit you and you were kind enough to host me at your place. So I know that place you're in right now quite well. And um, the magic of Turks and Caicos was is just tremendous. I'm actually calling in from Prague, Czech Republic right now. And um, I'm still in the midst of this of this tour with Roger Waters. And we will be wrapping up very soon. And part of the reason why I'm excited to be wrapping up is because... We have a project to do. Right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I figured we would maybe start by talking about how you and I first met. And and then maybe we go back even further and talk about your background, like how you got to where you are today. But let's talk about how we first met. Do you remember when and where and how that all happened? Yes. So I think I'd already been living in New York a couple years and I'd been seeing Dr. Passler, who was my nutritionist at the time and become a good friend of mine. Um, I first started to see Dr. Passler because I wasn't feeling so great having moved to New York. I felt like I started to gain weight, that my skin was having issues, um, that my energy levels were down. And so he really helped me uh, with my nutrition and uh, with my supplements and all of that. And you happen to start working with Dr. Passler and do the fitness side um, in his office. And so that's how we started working together, training together. And um, yeah, just always ask you so many questions during our training sessions. <laughs> um, and you invited me to do a breathwork workshop, I remember, which was really mm -hmm. fun. And, um, but then our, well, we were interrupted by the pandemic, like all work together. And um, and I actually came down to Turks with my family to do the lockdown here and never left. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and when I came back to New York to visit, I, I reached out to you to see if you wanted to grab coffee or something and, and catch up. And yeah. there we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I distinctly remember that. And it was... 
it was really cool that we were able to, I say we, my company, uh, System Fit, I was really happy that we were able to start working with Dr. Passler because I've known Dr. Passler for many years. Like I knew him when he was at his other facility and mm-hmm. and it was kind of a match made in heaven mm-hmm. when we blended our, our forces because he was taking care of a lot of high profile people like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we had, I had sent some of my clients to him in the past, like some of my model clients. So we had already had like a shared working relationship anyway, nice. but then we sort of decided to, when, when my company moved out of Midtown, cause we were in Midtown in a facility that was way too big for us. Mm-hmm. And we were paying way too much money. There were so many issues and we finally decided to to go down to Flatiron where Dr. Passler's office was. And he had all this cool equipment that I knew a lot about already. And then we put our heads together and I start telling him about all these other devices. And so he starts ordering up all these things. And next thing you know, we were just cranking it out. You know, we had so many clients and he was so generous in, in saying that I should work with you because he knew it was beyond um, his scope for, for the fitness Mm-hmm. Because really, at that before I came in, all he was doing was the the machines where people are supposed to be doing their own work, like the ARX right. system mm-hmm. or the Vasper system, and those are great. But I, I guess you wanted a little bit more than that. And so right. when I met you, first thing I thought was like, "Wow, this young girl is she's really fascinating." Because you were always so curious about how does this work and what does this mean and <laughs> and. Um, and I love when people ask questions because I have a very curious nature. So I thought, like, this is going to be really fun. And so I got a chance to to connect with you. And then, like you said, the pandemic happened. So everyone scattered, right? Mm-hmm. Dr. Pastor got out of his lease. That means we were out of our sublease, which was, mm-hmm. I mean, it was kind of a silver lining, to be honest with you. We were, we were outgrowing that place pretty quickly. Right. And, um, you know, fast forward to that moment you mentioned we met up after not seeing each other for a while. And when you opened your mouth in terms of like the fact that you wanted to possibly do a retreat of some sort, I was mm-hmm. like, is she reading my mind? Because like <laughs> I've been trying to do retreats for such a long time. But the problem that I run up against all the time is space, like right? Right. a proper space that feels good, that looks good, that's not difficult to get to, not too expensive. And when you kind of presented this opportunity, I was like, uh, should we be working together on this? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. No, it yeah. worked really naturally and perfectly. Um, yeah. And we really met again at the right time because I really was thinking about this project, but I wanted to work with someone who was, you know, amazing. <laughs> so yeah. just have the, the best of the best. Um, and the idea of retreats came to me because when, while I was living in New York, like I said, I wasn't feeling my best. Though you and Dr. Passler's office was my sanctuary. <laughs> I would come and re-energize and could have, couldn't have made it without you both. But um, mm. I still felt like there was something missing. Um, I even started therapy uh, and really wanted to figure it out. I think that's why I was asking so many questions. I was like, I'm not meant to feel this way. Like, I need to figure it out. I want to feel optimal and have all this energy. I'm young. Um, and then when the pandemic hit, uh, and my family and I, um, came to Turks and Caicos to do the lockdown, I just started to feel so much better. So, um, and I just, I think that the nature helped so much with my healing and the disconnect from the city life and just getting back into my circadian rhythm and reconnecting to the earth and all of that. I just, uh, it just made me feel so much better. And now I want other people to be able to experience that. Um, And also, so because my family has loved Turks and we've been coming down here for 16, 18 years now. Um, they've invested a lot in the in this island and have built homes. And so that is how I'm able to have this place for us to to host people and um, and also have the knowledge from being here so so long to be able to 
you know, to guide everyone and show them the best island has to offer. But I do realize that I don't have uh, so much experience or as much experience as you, Josh, in the wellness industry. And so to be able to combine our strengths and make this retreat happen, I think would be, I mean, it will be amazing. So, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. You know, the, the thing I love the most about what you were mentioning there is the fact that you're on this journey and I feel like we all are on a journey and you wanted to sort of bring back, I know your mission statement to me was you wanted to sort of bring the, the, the healing aspects of what you experienced. You want to bring that to the world, to the, to, to more people. That's and right. I think that's so beautiful. I think it's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's beautiful and it's very noble. And I think we're all fortunate. So anyone who gets a chance to experience this, we're all fortunate, myself included, because when I went there that first time, we, we simply went there to try to do the best we could in terms of getting content and also just getting myself familiarized with the island. Mm -hmm. And I had the time of my life, you know, it was, <laughs> it was, well, I think you remember, I had so many issues trying just, just to get there. <laughs> and I had lost luggage and all sorts of stuff, you know, but once I got there, I experienced something similar to what you experienced, which was there was no more worry. You know, I remember exactly. I was wanting to try to hit the ground running. I wanted to go and meet up with my buddy, Oscar, Oscar Isaac and his family were there mm -hmm. the same time frame that I was there for a couple of days, we overlapped. And I found myself wanting to go and meet up with him. And I remember showing him the photos and a video of where I was staying at your place. Mm -hmm. And he was like, bro, you're not coming here. We're going there. <laughs> right. <laughs> which, which is a pretty big statement, you know, because he was staying on a, a in a lovely resort, but mm -hmm resort life there is is one life right and then you've got everything else and that's what i got a chance to experience right where, where he was staying was is beautiful but secluded and you get to experience the resort but you don't get to really experience the island and so what i'd love to do and what i did with you is really show the, the island um so you really get a real sense of what it is to live here <laughs> and be a local here right um, right. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> um, I think something that would be important to, to discuss is, is a little bit more about that difference, right? So we know that many people go on vacations. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I should say I was never fortunate enough to be able to go on vacations when I was younger, just because I just, we, we didn't have the means and it just wasn't a part of my family, you know? So mm -hmm. I've since learned that lots of people do go on vacation. Right. And mm -hmm. so for those who do go on vacations, we typically know now that it's quite costly. And sometimes we work really hard to get in shape just to go on vacation and then ruin it. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's never made sense. I've always thought like, why not, live a healthy life as healthy as you can and vacation as healthy as you can and right. you know have fun at the same time but how about experiencing something that is that is also healthy for you that can increase your longevity as opposed to be a detriment to your longevity and this is what we try we're trying to build right, right. and it's it's not built yet right? right and so this is a journey just like everyone else's journey this is a journey um, I called it earlier, I called it, this is our little baby, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we're trying to, to foster this, this amazing being into something that is going to sort of run itself at some point. And, and I think that part is really important. So maybe we can talk about some of the things that people would be able to do at our retreat mm -hmm. that they may not be able to do on other vacations. What do you, what, right. what can you identify there? Well, firstly, this is a really good point. I completely agree with you. Um, mostly that most people only get a certain amount of days for vacation um, and, or they have a certain budget. And so to be able to have a vacation, but also it being something um, that, you know, grows and makes them better, um, it's just a better use of your time and uh, money personally. Um, so I mean, Turks and Caicos is 
a luxury destination. Um, it is expensive to uh, go on, come on holiday here. Um, so, uh, and a lot of tourists come and they stay in these beautiful resorts and they do just drink pina coladas at the beach all day and kind of see, you know, their, their beach and, and not much else. And that's completely not what experience you will get coming to our retreat. Um, you know, we will have obviously the wellness side, mostly led by Josh. But we will also go visit many beaches. We will have a boat day. We will go to deserted islands and sandbars and go snorkel the third largest reef in the world. And um, I'll be able to tell you the the name of the fish and the sharks and hopefully bump into some dolphins. Some We have some local dolphins here in Turks and Caicos that you can swim with. It's like SeaWorld here. Um, <laughs> and uh, so... It will be a completely different experience if you just came down and, and stayed at a resort for actually probably less cost than if you came down by yourself and have to, you know, book all the tours and eat out every day and book your resorts. And it would actually cost you more than coming on our retreat where you will get so much more value for your money um, and really get right. to experience uh, Turks and Caicos properly. Great point. And I think... I think it's also important to to touch on the fact that I never wanted, and I, I'm I'm sure you agree with me here, but we never really wanted this to be transactional. We didn't want this to be something that is all right. about the cost. No. While we do know that the cost is a factor, it should be it should turn into one of those things where people go, "That's a no brainer." Right. That's a no brainer because. Again, if you were to go to a resort in Turks and Caicos, and I I witnessed it, right? Like mm -hmm. just getting water, just getting food every day, it is expensive. Mm -hmm. it, and forget about buying clothes and stuff like that there. Um, but when you can sort of forget about all of that and you eat together with us as a community and you live in, in our facility, and, and I must say this, you don't have to we we broken this up and, and I think we will present some information like we've done with the email that we sent out. We do have mm -hmm. a PDF that kind of breaks down all the costs and things like that. But we wanted to have an option for people to get their own lodging. So their own flight and their own lodging. And they just pay for the retreat experience each day. Mm -hmm. And then we have another option in which people stay with us at this amazing villa, which is mm -hmm. incredible. Like if you go and you watch the video, Maybe we can have Gordon link to the video, the video mm -hmm. from my Instagram. Yes. But um, if you you see that's that's from my iPhone in this amazing villa, and you get an experience of that. And hopefully, we get some more content out very soon in which I show some of my workouts on the beach because we had a boat day, which was incredible. We went on the catamaran, which is called what is the catamaran called? <laughs> so catamaran's called Maria Len, which is my name, my sister's name. Uh, it's our family boat, um, and it stays right in front of, of the villa. Um, but we might do a day there, but we, there's also another sailboat on the other side of the island, um, mm -hmm. which takes you to the sandbars and the reef and loads of deserted beaches. So just so you get to ha to see both sides of the island, because it's not a big island, but as you saw, Josh, because we, we went all around it's very different what you know you drive 30 minutes and you're completely different nature and activities and things so exactly yeah and and i love it because there's options right you mm -hmm. know it's like yes i'm i'm learning this right because i didn't even i don't think i even did i go on the other cell boat you're talking yeah, about yeah we, we went about? we went on um on the adabera oh yeah and and you and oh. exactly <laughs> <laughs> you even yeah. pulled out the sail and everything so <laughs> that's right yeah i was i was acting you as were a crew a, uh, <laughs> i was part of the crew right like that's that right. was fun um and and also like you have your beautiful dog and like that's another thing that i thought was really special is that you guys obviously everyone knows you there mm -hmm. and so every place that we were popping into it's just like oh marie <laughs> you know and obviously you know the dog finn yeah. is, yes is finn i think there now? more people know he's not he's with my boyfriend on the boat right now uh he okay. has a trip um 
but uh, yeah, it's funny. Uh, m- people know Finn more than me now. They're like, oh, you're Finn's mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, right. So Finn, yeah, he's our, uh, so my boyfriend and I rescued the, uh, a puppy from another island in Turks and brought him back to Provo um, when he was only eight weeks old. And now he's about eight months old. Um, and we take him everywhere. So my boyfriend's in uh, boat charter business. And so he takes our dog with him every day. He has the best life. <laughs> um, and and um, what, what is the, sorry to cut you off, but I, I want to make sure people understand mm-hmm. um, the, it, it it's some kind of cake, like, like, something cake oh dog? so yeah so the um the local uh dogs here they're called pot cakes um pot cake yeah yes it's because they okay let me see if i can remember this correctly but um well the a local food down here is uh rice and peas and rice and they'll cook them in these huge pots and at the bottom there's the burnt rice and so they would leave the pot outside and all the dogs would come and, you know, scrape off the rice because it's just hard to, to clean otherwise. And that's how they got their names. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, it's sad because there is there are a lot of strays, um, but there are a lot of organizations down here that help. Um, and you can even come and, and walk puppies. Maybe we can organize that if that's oh, yeah. something that people are interested in. And you can yeah. take them home if you want or... Um, it just helps even to you know walk them and wash them and take them to the beach. Um, it's a really sweet thing to do. Yeah, I I remember seeing that because mm-hmm. I was like, you know, there's people that clearly are tourists, and I thought to myself like, wow, are all these tourists bringing their dogs? And you're like, no, that's most likely they they you know yeah. I guess rent the a dog for a day or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, yeah which so is really sweet. cool because then you have the option of keeping the dog right if you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot right. of people do. Actually, they all get adopted. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. And yeah. so just bringing that piece up yeah, and, and the option of doing that is what I love about working with someone who's truly a local now, right? right. You, your boyfriend's definitely a local, but yeah. you've hey. become a local as well. Right. And if, if a person has any, any idea of, like, I want to do blah, ask Marie, ask Eric, and, you know, yes. we can try to get that organized. And... Well, I don't know if it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I was just saying, because also um, mostly the first retreat we're planning on making it so small, um, mm-hmm. it can really be curated to whatever our guests want to do. And so we can really get an idea of who our guests are and what they're into. And then we can really curate it to them and have their experience really be like, curated to them and be amazing for them. So, you know, yeah. it can be a conversation, mostly our first ones. Um, I think that will make them so special. Um, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if it's going to be possible this, the, the, for the dates that we've set, um, which those dates off the top of my head is uh, Six July, of July 6th, mm-hmm. 6th of July till the 12th. Is that mm-hmm. right? That's right. 6th, 6th, 6th to the 12th. 12th of July. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. If it's possible, but remember we did the glow worms trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you we'll know? Have to check. Yeah, um, we'll have to check because this. Maybe you can explain that if you if you can remember it well enough. But th- this is something truly special, and I don't. I mean, maybe this will be a moment where we we also do an, an, a future one where we specify that time period. But can you explain what the glow worms thing is? Yes. Yeah, so um, this is why nature is so fascinating, right? Um, mm. But these glow worms, um, I've only seen them in Turks and Caicos. So I don't think that they exist anywhere else. But um, every month, just a few days after this full moon, and it's so precise, um, these glow worms come out. Just a f- and it's about 10 minutes after the sunset. So it's so precise. A few days after the full moon and 10 minutes after the sunset for about two, three nights, these glow worms come out. Um, to reproduce so it's kind of like a big orgy (laughs) and uh, orgy (laughs) orgy. Um, but it's beautiful because all these worms glow neon green and it really looks like the night sky on the water right 
And so you have mm. the stars and these glowing worms around you. And it's just so beautiful. And what I find so beautiful is just how precise it is. I mean, it's, I mean, you experienced it when you were, you were down here. Uh, but because it's so precise, it only happens once a month. And so I'll have to check if, um, you know, if, I mean, definitely if it happens during that week, then we will uh, have we'll to take and you it. and do it. Yes. Otherwise, um, we were talking already about maybe setting another date, maybe potentially in October or something, and we could try and see when the when the new moon is to make sure we can include that. Um, but even if we don't get to see that this first time, there are so many things to do. I don't even know if we'll be able to do everything in that one week that we, the six days right. that we have. Um, but yeah, and what's really special about Turk's nature is the water. Uh, that it's very much made of la limestone and sand, the whole island. So it's not, you know, it's not jungle or anything, but it's just the most beautiful white sand beaches in the world and this beautiful turquoise water with hundreds of shades of blue and beautiful marine life, you know, very healthy reef. Um, and so that's really what we're gonna incorporate in our retreats, you know, really doing a lot of water, water activities and water for me is so healing. I find that too, just being around water, um, the villa where we're gonna stay is right on the water. It's all made of glass. Um, and there's the lagoon behind us, there's the ocean in front of us. So we just feel like we're 360 surrounded by water and we hear the water when we're falling asleep. Um, so it's so calming, so healing and can't wait for, for those who come to experience it. So this is, I think, the perfect time to do a Pomodoro break. And after mm -hmm. we do our Pomodoro break, I want to document in a little bit more detail some of the things that people can expect to experience when they're at the retreat. Yes. So before we go there, though, let's let's do a Pomodoro break. What is what is something that you would do in moments in which you've been sitting for a long time or standing for a long time or you just feel yourself wanting to move? What is something you would do? Yeah, if I start getting a bit of brain fog and I realize that I've been sitting too long, I just go and grab my water, first of all, because it probably means I'm a bit dehydrated. And I'll just go for a little walk around my apartment and go and look at the beautiful view. <laughs> so I will take you oh, nice. on my little walk, okay. if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, take me on the walk. I'm going to walk around in this boring hotel room while you're there in paradise, okay? <laughs> okay, so let me show you the view. This is what I stare out and drink my I'm water. I'm like I'm swimming in the water right now. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do as soon as this podcast is over, is jump in the ocean. Oh, um, and actually, that Man, is... That view. Yes, I'll show you one more time. But this is the kind of beaches, the kind of water you will be swimming in on our retreat. <laughs> uh, and if yes. I do have, uh, because I live right on the water, and this is not where the retreat will happen. We have a bigger house where we can host everyone that's also right on the water. Um, but if I do have more time than, you know, five minutes to just walk around, um, I just go for an ocean dip. And that always helps me. I mean, I remember two days ago, I was just feeling in a funk. Oh, let me drink my water because I said that's what I do. <laughs> Too shy. Mm. Um, <laughs> and just, you know, one of those days where you just can't shake it off. Um, you're just kind of feeling a bit off. And, um, and I went for an ocean dip finally, mid afternoon and just straight away just felt so much better and then completely changed my day. I was like, why didn't I do that from, from the start, it just completely yeah. just connecting to nature, just being present, just, I don't know, for me, it just completely shifted. Like I didn't think anything could help that day. I was like, this is just that kind of day. And honestly, after that, I had, I had a great day. So really, for me, that Amazing. really, really helps. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, that's a great segue into what people can expect from being there. Because I do recall when I was there with you, you mentioned that very thing to me. So what you're saying is I can I can vouch for you and that <laughs> this is what you do because you do have access to the beach every day. So you you use it as much as possible. 
And yes. I remember we did it. I think we took a dip almost every single day, if not yeah. every day. And what I would liken that to is this grounding effect. And mm-hmm. so this, like I said, this would be a good little segue to talk about what people may be able to learn and experience yes. while being with us. And one of the first things that I would probably even talk about is grounding. Mm-hmm. And grounding is one of those things that I've belabored on this show and on, on my social media. But it's something that's very, very important because like you said earlier, it's all about resetting your circadian rhythm. Mm-hmm. So when when you first come, we want to give you an opportunity to get settled, meet everyone, say hi, get yourself you know, placed into your space, create your environment, chances are you're not going to be around loads of EMFs. Chances are you're not going to be around loads of light Mm -hmm. because we don't believe in light pollution, especially there in nature. Why? When the sun goes down, you're probably going to have candles. We're going to have low lit light. We're going to make a bonfire. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do as best as we can to mimic nature so that we can reset our circadian rhythm, if nothing else for that full week. Mm -hmm. And then the hope is that you go back and you take, you have what we call takeaways and hopefully those takeaways improve your life, help to optimize your life when you're not in nature, right? Mm -hmm. When you're not in the beautiful paradise of Turks and Caicos. So grounding, this is what I think about when you said you went out and you had a dip in the ocean, you can get that same effect just by walking barefoot in the, in the sand. Mm-hmm. So most likely we're going to be doing a lot of our workouts on the beach yes. or we're going to be barefoot most of the time, right? Cause there's no yes. point in wearing shoes inside <laughs> of this amazing place or outside really, you know, yeah. obviously we will, we'll talk about protecting your feet and we'll even go over, some of the most natural sunscreens and things like that. There's a lot of things that I think you and I both can encourage people to understand. And so while we want to make sure everyone has their, their proper things with them, we're going to have a number of things at, at your disposal as well so that you can take these away. Call call it a swag bag, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So most of the teachings that I'll be, adding to this is from the the book that I co-wrote with Tessa Cash called The Awareness Shift. And this is one of those things that I want everyone to to have or at least get upon leaving so that you can understand how it is that I think when it comes to health and wellness. And mm-hmm. one of the first pillars over this the entire book is quality awareness. So that's going to be one of the first things that we will be talking about aside from, you know, grounding and getting your, your environment set and things like that. But we want to talk about awareness. Why are you coming in the first place? Why do you feel the need to escape? Is it because you want to experience all the teachings that we have? Is it because you just want to have fun and maybe get fit at the same time? Whatever that reason is, we want to know because we want to help get you there. We want to help Mm -hmm. take you to that place. And quality awareness is going to be something that you may not discover until you finish the retreat. But Mm -hmm. we want to help you to to be aware most of the time. And what do you think is is another important piece to that? Because obviously, I'll go I'll talk about each of the pillars quickly. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to awareness, what is something that you have you feel like you've gained in your awareness and being in Turks and Caicos? Mm-hmm. Well, first, you're just adding to what I said. Sometimes you just have a calling to do something and you don't exactly have to know exactly why, but you just have to say yes and listen to that little voice in your head. And so if you feel cold that a retreat like this would be something good for you, then I think go for it. And then you'll understand why while you're with us. Um mm. But uh, how it changed my awareness. Firstly, when I was living in New York, sometimes I would go months without grounding. I was like, I don't even remember the last time my feet were not in shoes or like the last time my feet touched the ground. Um, And then when I, you know, would come down here for long weekends and just float in the water and ground myself, it just felt like all this stress and nearly... I don't know inflammation everything just like kind of ooze out of my body 
I don't know if, if you've ever felt that. Um, and mm. so just coming back here every time that I, I started to feel like I, I needed it, that I needed to reconnect to, to nature and, and, um, uh, but how my awareness just living, like properly living down here is just my values in life have completely shifted what I, uh, think are, is important, what I, um, value the most and now I you know I, I mean I live in a bathing suit and I'm bare but most of the time I, I don't care what brands I'm wearing I mean I I grew up um in Monaco where everyone cares what they're wearing and it's fancy and you know um and then I I was in New York and as well as a place of fashion and everyone's caring what they're wearing and who you know who they're going out with and you know it's a lot more social climbers the values are so different um what job are you working are you working x numbers of hours um and I really you know I came down here and I learned what it truly is to to just live right to just experience living um and you know wake up with the sun um go for a swim because you want to go snorkeling because you know you feel like it put you know do a beach walk have your feet in the sand and um you know I have uh local friends I I you know it doesn't like down here it really doesn't matter who you are I think that's why actually a lot of celebrities come down here just to be able to have that um you know feel like a normal person for a little bit just I think you feel coming down here that just no one cares about these things um and the most important thing is is the nature and the community and I think that's beautiful and so that's completely changed my awareness that's beautiful and I think that's when, when I imagine the person that's watching or listening or or both um what I imagine is some people out there might be thinking, yeah, but you're lucky. You get a chance to live there and this and that. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Okay. Whoever's listening or watching, I hear you. Here's the thing though. What we want to try to do is allow you to experience all that and then teach you ways to develop that within your, your home when you go back, once you leave. Right. And there is ways, there are ways to do that. In fact, Currently, as I speak, I am, I've been on the road on tour for over four months. And if I am able to still maintain sort of my, my environment, my circadian rhythm, even though it's a little bit off these days, I'm still able to find a way to make it as best as possible. And that's what we want to, what we want to do. We're not expecting everyone to want to up and move to Turks and Caicos. (laughs) Maybe you, maybe you will, but how can you learn with us, experience with us, and then take that back? And then hopefully you spread that to other people and then more and more people. And then that's how we build this community. Mm-hmm. Not everyone's going to be able to, to afford to come to the, the, the retreat in Turks and Caicos. We understand that. But what happens if we start to make a movement and people start understanding that, wow, these guys are onto something, then maybe we have a retreat open up near you, <laughs> right? Yeah, Maybe exactly. Maybe we have a, a place in the States because I want to do this all over the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can definitely you know? do it somewhere that's not as expensive. Um, I do think Turks is such a special place and a special place to start this movement, but it doesn't have to end here um, and, right. and, you know, and only be here. Um, also, yes, I do live in Turks right now, but... Um, I didn't used to. And when I was in New York, I would come back here and re-energize and then bring back that energy back to New York that would last me a long time. And it was really the practices that I did every day. That was the most important part. And so we will, you know, in the retreat, um, there'll be a lot of, uh, Josh, you will teach us a lot about those practices and what everyone can bring back home with them and keep doing. Um, and I think that's the most important part of the retreat is yes, you will reconnect to nature, hopefully reconnect to yourself, to, to others and 
in this little community that we're starting to build, but also that you will be able to bring back all the tools to your back home and and con and continue um, to improve and and use the, your new skills. So, and that will be literal and figurative tools, right? right. So we're going to be leaving you with a bunch of tools that maybe I'm going to help you like some of the, some of the things, for instance, I plan on bringing to the retreat in terms of tools that people can take with them are things like the rope flow. I may also have uh, the slack block. I'll um, I'll have some transcriptions products. So like blue canatine, trocalm, just blue, for people who have been curious about what those things are and what they do and how they can help. Mm -hmm. I also hope to have some uh, ketone products because I know a lot of people are curious about ketones, exogenous ketones. Mm -hmm. And I, my hope is that I'll be able to have enough space in my luggage to bring quite a bit of that over as well. Maybe I have to just send it over. Um, and I mean, and these are just some of the physical tools. We're going to do so many things. We also will go over, the 15 by five program that I've developed that will obviously will do the first week, but it's a full month program that people can do. And again, take back with you. That's a, a figurative take back with you. It's something that we hope to build upon at the retreat, but then mm -hmm. allow you to, to go forth and multiply and, and continue to get fit. So that's another takeaway. What, what are the, or I guess the next pillar that we can talk about and touch on, and maybe we'll make the rest of these a little quicker. Mm -hmm. um, the next pillar is quality rest, which is the sleep and recovery category. And I know you've kind of touched on the fact that when you're in nature, it's a little bit easier to get good quality rest because you're not going to have all of this noise, right? Because mm -hmm. this noise and EMFs and extra energy is probably what got to you in the buzz of the city. Right. When you come to Turks and Caicos, you get a chance to fully understand what it's like to have quality rest. What can you say about that? Yes. Well, firstly, I, I'm sure we will um, have exercises to unwind at the end of the day. Um, except, well, we'll have the proper lights and the bonfire and um, may it be like some kind of music, some meditation, some breath work. So all of mm -hmm. that will help for sure. Um, also, the beds are super comfortable. <laughs> um, but um, I did have a friend come recently from New York, and she's a medical student. And so she tracks her sleep. She's very interested in all of that, too. And her and the app shows her the quality of sleep that she she has. And she was averaging about 74 uh, percent quality. And then she came here and it was like 98 percent or something like wow. it's completely and she was here only four nights she wanted to stay longer but she couldn't I'm sure she'll come back but um she just had the most restful sleep she said in uh, she didn't even know how long and maybe wow. you will come here and sleep for so long I even I had a, another friend come for a week and then she ended up extending another week because the first week most of the time she ended up sleeping so much because she was like I don't remember <laughs> last time I got such proper rest you know and um wow. and so I just think that coming to Turks your stress levels will just go down um and you'll be able to finally properly get that rest that you need like you know sometimes you're just like I don't understand why I'm so tired like I I you know I slept okay I slept eight hours um, but just the quality of that sleep wasn't great. And so I think I'm down here. And like you said, not having all this noise pollution, and light pollution and stresses and all of this, your body will finally just stop being in fight or flight and just finally just let you get that rest that you really need. That's how I see exactly. it. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, well said. And that's a great story. So thanks for sharing that because I do think that it's easy for me to, I've been doing this for such a long time and I talk and blabber about sleep quality and circadian rhythms and things like that. But when you have this beautiful testimony, cause that's in a sense, that's a testimony, right? Mm -hmm. That is something that I think people can relate to. And that's what we hope that everyone achieves. Right. And maybe you don't get 
98% and maybe, you know, maybe you already sleep at that. But what we do know is that there should be a shift in your, your perspective. Mm-hmm. You, and then we will, we'll have exercises and drills in which we can help you to reframe things. Because even as a health coach, I work with a lot of people outside of fitness. So sometimes, and so far we haven't even talked about fitness yet, right? Because that's the last pillar anyway, but, and, and we will be talking a lot about fitness and doing a lot of fitness stuff on the retreat for sure. But I want to paint this picture of it's more about your awareness, your quality rest. Mm -hmm. And then the next piece is the next pillar, which is pillar number three is quality consumption. And I know this is a big part of the retreat because you and I have been talking about like I even wanted to, I know that there's a big problem in Turks and Caicos with importing, right? There's a lot of the high costs come because everything has to be imported. And obviously when you and I first talked and I got there, I'm like, well, why can't we start a regenerative farm? Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, there's a family already doing that here. Right. And so, (laughs) you know, and I, I got a chance to experience that, which I thought was cool. Maybe that's another thing we can do with the group is take them to see Mm -hmm. what it's like to try to like, rebuild the, the land and yeah. how to actually feed off the land yeah mm-hmm. yeah big turks and caicos is technically a, a desert if we think about how much rain we have here um mm. and so yeah it's they're pretty amazing they're called a sunshine nursery and and they grow um many plants and have you know some ducks and and they have their own eggs and all of that and um and so they've really made something incredible happen. I mean, you you went to see, like, you saw how much work it is. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, so it's true, we don't have too much, many local produce beca- because really the, like I was saying, I, the island is made of sand and limestone. Uh, it's why the beaches are so beautiful, why the water is so beautiful, but we don't have too many. And we have some local cucumbers and papaya and things, but most of our food um, for she's imported. Um, so, uh, but we will try and get as much, you know, local produce, even if it's just the cucumbers, some herbs, some, the eggs from the, uh, from sunshine nursery, you know, um, and, uh, and we'll have a chef to prepare all the, the food and make it gluten-free and refined sugar-free and make it as organic and, and healthy as possible. Um, but also I know Josh, you wanted to incorporate some community cooking so that people can go back home and be able to also, you know, cook some of the things that they ate at the retreat and be able to keep taking care of themselves back home. Um, so. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun because I remember growing up when I would go to church on the weekends or we would go to family get togethers, we, we we would do a thing called potluck. And I don't know what it's called in other parts of the world, but basically everyone brings their own dish and you bring it all together and it's called potluck and everyone eats with all these amazing meals that everyone cooked. And whether you like a certain food or not, knowing that, something was prepared with love is what makes that such an incredible experience. And Mm -hmm. I wanted to try to bring some version of that. Obviously we can't travel with food to Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. Just don't do that. Anybody don't bring your own food, Uh, but I'll be plenty here for you. (laughs) Right, right. Exactly. But I do think that it would be really cool to allow people to join in on the, the process of, of cooking and or preparing or helping to clean up because I think that's the part that makes it more of a community thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we, what I would call quality consumption. Right. Let's forget about if it's vegan or vegetarian or gluten-free or anything, we're going to, we're going to try to adjust as best we can and accommodate for every person's limitation or, or, or situation when it comes to eating. At the same time, we want everyone to join in because it's going to be better for your health. That yeah. that's hands down. That's very esoteric and in, in belief. I do know that, but there is a lot of science behind that. So when we join hands and we sit around a bonfire or we sit in, you know, in certain sitting positions, cause we're talking about sitting positions, <laughs> there's going to be so many things that, that I'm going to be blabbering on about, 
but I also wanted it to be a moment in which I'm not the only one talking and sharing. I want everyone to be talking and sharing. I want, if you have questions about the best footwear, if you have yeah. questions about the best times to eat, should we be fasting or not? We're going to have all of that available. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is like going on tour and having a trainer, like, like what Roger Waters is doing right now. He's hired me to be on tour. Madonna hires me to go on tour with her and to work with her. Um, this is literally going to be like each person that has joined this retreat. It's going to be like you have hired me to come on tour with you. Right. And, and that's, that's what it is really, you know? Yeah. So, so the first three pillars we've just talked about quality awareness, number one, quality rest, number two, mm -hmm. quality consumption, number three. The next two are going to be the most fun ones, I think, and that's quality activeness and quality exercise. Four and five are similar. The main difference is I want to I want people to understand that you don't have to necessarily exercise to live a healthy life, but it is important to be active and to move most right. of the time. And so that's a, an important distinction. And so I want that to be something that we do every single day that we're there. I want to teach mm -hmm. you ways to work out. Do you have to go to a fancy gym? Do you have to have all the best equipment? Do you have to have the best clothing? No. Most of what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be able to enlighten you and crush you <laughs> without it's true. having it's to still hard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That and, still works. <laughs> right. Well, I, my hope is that we we have some of that footage in which mm -hmm. I was Remember we were on the beach and and yes. people were joining in and we were doing all the crawling and the yeah we should send stuff and yeah we should share some of that just so they get an idea um, yeah but it was it was fun that's the thing it, it was hard but it was fun so it just went by quick and it just showed some people were in their bikini some people were you know and we're all barefoot on the sand and it would you know it still worked it just shows how little we need to get a, a good workout and good movement in so right. And and together with all of that, because I just went through all five pillars, together with all of that, I'm going to also be available for one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to, to talk with me one-on-one, -on -one, maybe it's something uh, more private that you would want to speak with someone about, I'm going to be available. I also have available loads of people, maybe we'll have them call in, but people who run other companies. So instead of maybe doing it as a podcast, maybe we will, but it would be a situation where someone calls in and we, we have a group discussion. I think that would be really important. And we want to break up the day such that you have the option to join in or not. Right. This is nothing that's going to be mandatory, but my hope is that everyone gets something out of this. Mm -hmm. And the best way for us to offer that and to be able to carry that out is for you to communicate with us on what you want, what you need exactly. and what's important to you. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that you think is worth uh, mentioning in terms of what we what we plan to do? Um, just that this is going to be really fun. You know, this is really going to feel like an amazing holiday with amazing people, hopefully an amazing community. Um, and you'll just get to pick Josh's brain, which I'm excited for. I mean, whenever <laughs> I get to spend time with you, I'm like, Josh, what is this? This like I, I just want to know everything. Um, you know, because yeah. you really live what, what you say. So you really are a great example of, of what you do. And so um, I'm Thank just, you. yeah, I'm excited to to also pick your brain um, and, and have so much fun at the same time. So, well, well, thank you for that. That's very sweet. And likewise, I want people to also, like I mentioned earlier, I want people to also get to know you and ask you questions because you have a lot of experience as well. Mm -hmm. And it may be, maybe there's more questions about the islands and what to expect and things like that. And I want you to thrive in that. And if I'm gonna, imagining Eric will be there too. And, you know, I want people to, to connect with him and I want people to connect with Finn and I want people to <laughs> Yeah, they'll friends. both be there. And you can ask them all questions about the island and the best places to go and um, and just the history of the island and uh, what it's really like to live on a, on an island. Because uh, yeah. I think that's my number one question is like, what is it like? You know, it's so such a different um, world. Like, 
um, different way of life. Um, so I can also answer all those questions and more about my experiences and the, and the people I've worked with, um, you know, that I, I've learned um, from my spiritual, spirituality teacher how to meditate, um, how, uh, a lot about prayer. I've read a lot of books about it. So if anybody wants to ask me any questions on that, or maybe I could even lead something it depends what people are interested in so um, but i'm happy to lead them in in prayer meditation or journaling or anything that they would be interested in that world um learn a bit more about my my journey and how um i healed myself because i really was you know and like now i have all this positive <laughs> energy um but i wasn't like this a few years ago and i wish that i could have gone on a retreat like the one we're planning and that would have saved me so much time to you know mm. understand how how to get better and what's really important um and so yeah please ask me any questions as well or reach out send, send me in dms or email or we could even organize calls i don't mind <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I do plan on doing some sort of live, whether it's like an IG live or YouTube live. I want to do something where people can can start to reach out and ask a little bit more. And obviously, we're going to try to put this out as soon as possible. So people have time mm -hmm. to consider what their plans are going to be. Right. And at the at the end of this, we're going to let people know the best ways to reach out and, and keep in yes. touch with us. And um, we're also going to mention a little discount, a little offer yes. uh, for, for the listeners of this show. And before we do that, I always ask two questions before we wrap up the show. And uh, I know you've only had like, but so much time to, to consider these. So no pressure. But first question is, what are your top two pet peeves right now? Mm -hmm. Hard. Um... I'd say one of my pet peeves is, you know, if you're at a restaurant and the person you're having dinner with talks down the waiter or like looks down on the waiter, um, you know, talk to them differently than they talk to you. Or um, even like the crew on, on my family's boat, if I have a, if we've invited someone and they, you know, don't treat our crew like they treat us because we really see our crew as family. That's how, you know, we grew up, we had, all our meals with them, they're, they're become part of the family. And so that for me is that big pet peeve and I cannot understand it. Um, mm. Completely turns me off. Um, and second one. <laughs> um, let's see. You, you must not have very much stress. No. If you can't think of a second one. I mean, that's cool. A pet I think peeve. that's cool. I'm just trying to think of what annoys you. Honestly, when you're just so relaxed, that not much <laughs> annoys you. I'm well, sure I'll well, probably think did, of one after, but. You did mention driving in Turks and Caicos. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the driving is not the best. People don't use their <laughs> blinkers. People do. <laughs> you know, we're on an island, so it's kind of, yeah, island driving is it's questionable. Um, so yeah, that definitely annoys me sometimes. Like, like this is definitely not legal. <laughs> yes. But well, anyway, I, listen, I'm I'm certain there's a few people out there wagging their finger at you too, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, I'm sure. I'm not. Per I'm not a perfect driver. That's for sure. <laughs> I learned yeah, very but late. All good. All good. I I I trusted your driving when I was with you, so good. it was fine. <laughs> um, okay. Last question, and this is one of my favorites. Yes. What is something you're most grateful for? Mm -hmm. Well, I think top one right now is I'm grateful to be living where I am. Like I know how special it is to have been living in Turks for the past years. Um, that it was such a special place for me that um, I healed here. I met my boyfriend here. Um, I'm going to start my retreat with you here. So this has really been such a special place. And I, um, I do feel so lucky to be able to, you know, have come here and place to be my home. 
Um, and then obviously I'm, I'm grateful for my health because without health, we have nothing. And so that's the number one thing we should invest in. Um, mm. yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Let's wrap up by telling people the best ways to like, to keep in touch, to stay up to date on all things, awareness experience retreat. Yes. Well, I think both of our Instagrams at Marie give us for me and then Joshua J Holland for me. Mm -hmm. And And we will obviously put that in the the show notes and the description. So you can Um, send us any DMS and we will also be posting maybe some lives and maybe we could do a Q and a and um, also post the the promo. So we should we already say um, what it is. (laughs) Yeah. 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 We, we, what what Marie is getting at is that we wanted to offer a discount for sort of early bird uh, people signing up. And we know that we're getting close to crunch time, but it's still enough time for people to, to jump in sort of sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. And so she wanted to offer a discount, which I think is very, very generous. And what is that? Yes. So for all the listeners and everyone who's close to us, we're offering 15% off the retreat and accommodation. Um, and we'll, we'll offer that probably for about a week once we um, post, this. post this, right? Um, right. So yeah, I would definitely take advantage of this offer. Um, and we just want to make it because we want as many people to be able to make it. So if that helps you, um, that would be, I would love to have you. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I think that's really cool because again, I, I am just grateful. Speaking of gratitude, I'm grateful to be able to work with you on this because this will be the first time that we officially did a retreat. Mm -hmm. I know that the first one when I was there was kind of a a mock retreat, so to speak, but this is going to be the first one in which we actually are putting our heads together to come up with some stuff. So Yes. I'm really grateful to be working with you on that because I know how beautiful that place is. I know how special it is. And I want to help bring that together with Marie to all of you. Yes. So that's that. Marie, <laughs> thanks for your time. For the listeners and followers, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please feel free to reach out. We want to spread amazing awareness experiences with all of you in the form of a retreat. Yes. So, thank you so much, Josh. Peace. Bye, everyone. Simply walk the top. Walk the talk, talking facts Move like me, but I move a little fast Make my move, here to last Fast in these seatbelts, I'm coming past Take care of me, longevity Hack my biology, better believe Walking the talk, so mind and body connected Better come give us a listen